Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness did something I never thought would actually happen. It turned a main hero into a villain. Things just got out of hand. As much as I wanted Scarlet Witch to break bad, I didn't think Disney would ever actually go through with it. But there Wanda went, turning Mr. Fantastic into a pile of shredded cheese and literally ripping Professor X's face in half. So now that the door is open for beloved heroes to turn evil, what other Avengers could switch sides? Captain America? Iron Man? Moon Knight? Some of these will be serious, others we're gonna have fun with, so let's get started right now. That's okay. Trust me. Hail Hydra. So I'm going to start out this list with a bit of a stipulation. The first three entries are going to be different universe versions of some of our favorite characters, and then the rest will be our main universe versions of the characters who break bad. Wait. Sound good? Awesome. I'm doing this because I want to start with Iron Man. I've mentioned in past videos about how superior Iron Man would make an excellent villain in the MCU, and given all the multiverse stuff in recent films, I still stand by that. In fact, maybe there's a way to neatly tie it into the ongoing story. Here's my idea. You remember how there was that extra seat in the Illuminati board meeting in Multiverse of Madness? Well, even though Professor X seemed to introduce all the members, what if that universe is version of Iron Man was also on the team in a limited capacity. Maybe he only shows up when he feels like it and was busy that day doing something else. But now you have a version of Iron Man whose universe was invaded by people from other universes who effectively wiped out all their heroes. What now? <laughs> That would send Iron Man into paranoid mode and want to make sure his Earth is protected from multiversal threats. He could even question and then recruit the powerful hero who was brainwashed by a different universe version of herself. Yes, that's right, I'm talking about Wanda. Right there, you check so many boxes. You can have a slightly evil version of Iron Man who's obsessed with stopping the perceived threat of our 616 universe. You can bring Wanda back in a slightly different form with that different universe version of herself, and you build off what the MCU has already established with Earth 838 instead of introducing a whole new universe for our universe to clash with. So Sam Wilson's Captain America 4 is moving forward, and I'm pretty excited for it. As much as I had some structure problems with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier TV show, I liked the character journey Sam went on, and it made me fully believe that he's perfect to hold the shield, even though he doesn't have the Super Soldier Serum, and he's going to have a lot to deal with in the future. But I keep trying to come up with the perfect villain for him to fight. Well, what if it's an evil version of Captain America from a different universe? I think bringing this element into in would work great for either Captain America 4 or for whatever big event movie happens down the line like Secret Wars. Evil Captain America is great in Secret Empire and that would be an awesome adaptation to really challenge Sam down the line. There's something so depressing about seeing an evil version of one of Marvel's greatest heroes and Captain America would be one of the ones that hurt most. It's why we all wanted to punch John Walker in the face the moment he held up the shield. I know we would all love to see Chris Evans back in the MCU, but I don't think he'd do it unless it was something really interesting. Offering him a boatload of money to play an evil version of Captain America for one movie might do it as he's been kinda dabbling with evil roles as of late. Or to really break everyone's mind, why not cast John Krasinski as another universe Steve Rogers who's evil? He was up for the part originally, so that would be a fun tie-in. That way, he doesn't have to be Mr. Fantastic again, as well as highlighting the true chaotic nature of the multiverse. Speaking of John Krasinski in the MCU, let's talk about an evil version of Mr. Fantastic. I know this is jumping the gun a bit because we haven't met our main Mr. Fantastic just yet, though I'm really hoping for a full cast announcement at Comic-Con this year. So if you're watching this after the Comic-Con panel, you might have an answer. But for the record, I'm really hoping for either The Good Place's William Jackson Harper or It's Always Sunny's Glenn Howerton to be Reed Richard. This game 
has gone on long enough. Let's see if I was right. Anyways, there's a version of Mr. Fantastic in the Ultimate Universe that turns evil and starts going by the name The Maker. If Mr. Fantastic and the Fantastic Four are going to be big parts of the MCU going forward, then I think it's only fair to introduce evil counterparts of themselves. I mean, what better villain for the Fantastic Four other than Mr. Fantastic? I mean, let's look at the stats. The previous Fantastic Four movies all couldn't get Doctor Doom or Galactus right, and although I have faith in the MCU to adapt these characters properly, maybe it would be easier to just pit them against an evil multiverse version of themselves first. That way, you can continue to build off the multiverse idea that's becoming so prevalent to the franchise now. Okay, let's turn our attention to characters who are already in our universe and in the MCU who could turn bad. And this entry kinda already has? Moon Knight gave us Oscar Isaac, giving one of the best overall performances by an actor in the MCU to date. But it ended on a not very high note. The evil Jake Lockley seemed to be running amok, and I would like the MCU to continue to explore that for a little bit before eventually Moon Knight turns good. Because I think that's a super interesting concept. Like, let's look at some upcoming projects. We have the Halloween special Werewolf by Night coming this year, and it would be a really clever and smart idea to have Werewolf by Night fight a version of Moon Knight to tie into Moon Knight's very first comic appearance. You can have him be the antagonist of the story and hint that Steven and Mark are trying to regain control of the body. On top of that, he could be the antagonist of the upcoming Thunderbolts movie that's also in development. This is one hero that doesn't have to stay evil, but it would be nice if the franchise actually actually explored the character as a bad guy for a bit, before turning him back to the side of good. No, the idiot's back. Alright, anyone who knows my voice on CBR knows that whenever the Hulk is mentioned, I talk about how I'm not super happy with his character development so far in the franchise. I think he's been the most underserved Avenger, and right when we were going to get the culmination of Hulk and Bruce Banner's complicated relationship, they swept it aside because Endgame demanded it, and it was just funny seeing Bruce in Hulk's body. For years, I've been treating the Hulk like he's some kind of disease, something to get rid of. But then I start looking at him as the cure. Never mind the implication that they erased the Hulk personality, but now that She-Hulk is stepping up to presumably be our main Hulk going forward, that gives the OG Hulk a chance to break out and do something interesting. If season 1 of She-Hulk is all about She-Hulk's introduction, maybe a season 2 could follow the Hulk personality freeing himself from Professor Hulk's body and going on a true villainous rampage. That not only would give She-Hulk a great villain to fight in a later project, but also give Hulk a chance to truly Hulk out in a way we've never seen before in the MCU. Or I'll just throw it in that if they don't want to do that, let's explore a different universe Hulk who went through the true Planet Hulk and World Breaker Hulk storyline, or even introduce Maestro thanks to the multiverse. There's a ton of options. There's only the Maestro. Man, as much as I loved Multiverse of Madness, I really disliked the ending. The final shot of the movie is Strange becoming corrupted by the Darkhold like everyone warned him about and screaming in pain while growing a third eye. Smash cut to credits and boom, an amazing ending, right? Well, for about 45 seconds it was awesome until the mid credit scene had Strange casually walking down the sidewalk, seemingly fine, then Clea pops up saying she needs help and Strange unleashes his third eye and is ready to fight the good fight. So he has it under control now? That's actually kind of lame, especially because they made a huge deal about how the Darkhold would corrupt literally anyone who used it, which is why Wanda using it was so tragic. They need to follow through with that a bit and show Doctor Strange as a bit evil for a while until some outside force can cure him or else it makes it a cop-out. If Doctor Strange could just try super hard and not turn bad, then why couldn't his alternate universe version of himself do that? Or why? So let's see how that plot unfolds, please. Yelena is arguably the breakout new character of Phase 4. From the moment she appeared on screen, I immediately wanted her in just about every future project imaginable. She could have jumped universes in Multiverse of Madness with Doctor Strange, or helped stop a giant celestial from emerging from the Earth in Eternals, and I wouldn't have complained. And although her character toes the line in terms of morality, I would love to see her take the dark side for a spin for a while. Are you in New York to talk to Clint? Is that why you're here? I'm here to kill him. 
We sort of already saw that in the Hawkeye TV show where she was adamant about killing Clint no matter what, but although that's resolved, what happens in the future? Yes, she's on a mission to cure all the brainwashed Black Widows, but after that's done, what if Yelena decides to finally just do whatever she wants? As much as a future team up between the new Hawkeye and the new Black Widow would be amazing given Haley Steinfeld and Florence Pugh's chemistry, I think I would like to see a second season of Hawkeye where Yelena is the bad guy that Kate Bishop has to stop. That would just add a new wrinkle to their fun dynamic. So Vision is in a super weird place right now. He was originally destroyed by being killed twice in the span of 30 seconds. Then he was brought back to life in an evil robot form thanks to Wanda's chaos magic. But then a fake reality version of himself gave OG Vision all his memories back and then the new white Vision flew off to parts unknown to process it all. That's a wild trajectory when you lay it out like that. But it also was so weird to me that Vision didn't get any mention in Multiverse of Madness as someone Wanda would want to make contact with? Was Paul Bettany busy or too expensive or something? That was weird, right? Well, I think what would make Vision's exclusion from Multiverse of Madness alright would be if he's still being a villain somewhere. I'm not saying he needs to stay a villain, but I think he still needs that hero moment where he decides to be good. Like, again, White Vision might be a great villain for the Thunderbolts. Think about it, a group of off-the-books mercenaries hunting down a rogue AI former Avenger? Sounds awesome. If Ant-Man turned evil, then we'd all be in trouble. His skill set clearly makes him one of the strongest Avengers, and if he wasn't as much of a kind-hearted doofus, then the world would truly be put on notice if he broke bad. Can you imagine what would have to happen for Scott Lang to turn evil? Like, Hank Pym, I can buy turning evil no problem, but Scott? No way. I don't think any natural reason would make Scott turn to a life of villainy, but maybe they could make it where Quantum Mania has a moment where Scott is so warped by the quantum realm that he's a changed person forcing Wasp and Cassie Lang to team up to take Scott down and hopefully cure him? Come on, don't you want to see Scott acting villainous for a little bit? I know I do. Multiverse of Madness showed just how great it is to see Patrick Stewart playing Professor X. He just fits into the older mental role so well. Plus, James McAvoy also did an amazing job, so I think the MCU is a little stuck when it comes to reintroducing the new Professor X. We're just going to compare them to the other two actors who played him, so I think a way to introduce Professor X is to make him a bad guy at first. If we're introduced to a universe that's clashing with Universe 616, then it would be cool to see Professor Professor X on the enemy side before eventually turning good. How would our Avengers fight against the most powerful mutant around? Could they call in Wanda for a face snap assist? But okay, I guess it would truly be hard to imagine Professor X as a villain, though there might be a better mutant choice to choose. Cyclops has often been the butt of many jokes thanks to his Fox character portrayal. But anyone who knows the comic character knows Cyclops is no joke. He's an incredibly strong, super tactical leader of the X-Men. And maybe to show how strong he can be, let's start him off as a bad guy. Maybe there's a situation where we meet another universe where all the heroes have turned evil for some reason, and before they're turned to the side of good, we get to see them in full power fight our main heroes? I know it's radical, but it would highlight someone like Cyclops' strength. Loki started as a villain, then turned good, then died, then a previous evil version of him had to turn good again. Wild trajectory. And it means that he's due for another switch up. I think Loki season 2 should tempt Loki with his villainous ways once again to show how he's always so close to switching sides if necessary. Of course he can switch back, but I want to see Loki have such trouble with fighting Kang that he considers teaming up with the Conqueror instead. Look, I've been loving good Loki, but evil Loki Loki has always been so much fun to watch. Enough! You are all of you beneath me. I am a god, you dull creature. What do you think? Which do you prefer, evil Loki or good Loki? The MCU has loved to introduce objects in Phase 4 that corrupt good people and turn them evil. We've seen it happen with the Darkhold and Gore's Necro Sword, so why couldn't it also happen to the Ten Rings? Shang-Chi was given full control of the rings at the end of his origin movie, and I think an interesting path to take with the character is Shang-Chi fighting to not be corrupted and overwhelmed with all his new strength. Yeah, Shang-Chi was a great fighter, but he went from secret martial artist valet driver to holder of some of 
of the most powerful artifacts on Earth in the span of like four days. How does that affect his character? How does he not become like his father? We know he has the capacity for darkness, and I want to see a sequel where he sort of struggles with it a bit. Plus, Shang-Chi singing karaoke is great, but an evil version of Shang-Chi singing karaoke is practically god-tier. Look, I hate to judge a book by its cover in the MCU, but Druig was kinda creepy, right? Yes, he had off-the-walls chemistry with Makari, which made that ship incredibly appealing, but he still had a sinister edge to him, especially with his power to take over and influence humanity's minds. There were moments in Eternals where Druig was a somewhat bad guy having people under his mind control, but he never crossed over to full-on villainy. I think out of all the Eternals, Druig would be the one most capable of switching sides sides if the situation called for it, and he would also be one of the most difficult Eternals to have to fight. The last one will just be a fun one. What would happen if the Guardians of the Galaxy truly turned evil? Would they become the most powerful villain group in the galaxy, or would they still be the slightly incompetent, scrappy, ragtag family that only barely scrapes by? And I could see this happening as some sort of joke. Like on one of their missions, I could see the Guardians stumbling across an artifact that brings out their worst impulses, or flips their morality or something, and they go on a villain spree. Then someone like Gamora would have to save them. Wouldn't that that be interesting? We're all expecting Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 to be about the Guardians trying to track down the 2014 version of Gamora that's now in our timeline in order to bring her back into the family. But what if James Gunn flips that expectation on its head where ultimately Gamora has to save the Guardians from being bad? Who do you think out of the Guardians besides Nebula would make the best bad guy? I do actually really want to see an evil Star-Lord or an evil Groot. Were you surprised overall by Scarlet Witch's heel turn? I know I was. I thought the end of WandaVision was suggesting she was on a path of controlling her powers and using the Darkhold effectively, but nope, I guess not. But I think that proves heroes make great villains, right? Anyways, thanks for watching CBR. See you next time.